but there are different sectors that we want to check and find out what they think about the first 100 days of the government in power. This time around, we are focusing on agriculture. It's one key area that we need to talk about. If you don't talk about agriculture, it means you are not interested in the food you eat. You should know where it comes from and what the policies are to protect that sector, if not for anything at all, for your own sake. So today, I'm going to speak with two key people. We're going to speak with the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana and then Sea Traders Association of Ghana two key stakeholders on the assessment of what we can do to make the sector better, to invest more in the sector, and get the returns and the yield we want. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. First of all, let me start with um, the 100 days of the government. You are assessing per your sector. What do you think? Uh, Martha, thank you, and then thank you for giving us the opportunity. You know, our season has just started. The rains are coming and we are preparing our lands to plant. If you ask me of 100 days since the uh, MPP government came to power, I would say it's too short uh, to uh, pronounce any judgment because they came at a period when we were in the, um, a break. Let me put it so, because uh, from January to March, uh, rains are not coming. We are not planting. It's a period we used to prepare to plant. But um, if I am to assess the signs that I'm seeing, I would say so far uh, it's not too bad, though I cannot uh, be emphatic. You are being extremely cautious. Yeah, I, can yeah see that. I have to because mm. in the past um, we saw government allocation, especially to the agriculture sector, being fantastic. But when it comes to the disbursement, it's a problem. Okay. So what we've seen in the 100 days is um, when the Ministry of Finance um, announced or read the budget. So we are looking at what, is, what has been the allocation for our culture sector. Mm. The allocation for our culture sector, when the budget was read, has increased over the previous years of over 450 million Ghana cities. Okay. And out of that, 420 is going to support fertilizer subsidy and mechanization. Okay. So that represents about 93% of total budget that is going to fertilizer subsidy and mechanization alone. So if you are somebody who advocates for input subsidy, then you, then you are it. likely to say that it's good. Uh, another area that they also announced, and we are all aware, is planting for food and jobs. Mm. And in this area, they are looking at supporting input subsidy, that is seed and fertilizer, mm -hmm. and then extension services. Yes. Though the, it's a fantastic program that will welcome it, but we have difficulties. I know you have approach. difficulties, so you have challenges, so yes. So I you say that the 100 mm. days, at least they made a mm. good pronouncement. Okay. But I cannot conclude that it's an achievement because uh, as a project manager, we call those things inputs. Okay. So you have the inputs and then the input will now yield a result. So it will not be right. So I understand, you want to, to wait and we measure by the results yeah, by the of results. whatever will yeah. come out of this We don't this want one. to make our measurement based on input. Okay. Because the input can either bring positive results or negative results. E exactly. And Ifia Ousu Nyantichi is executive member of the Sea Traders Association of Ghana. Welcome to you too. Do you care assessing the 100 days? What have you seen? Yes, a little bit on that. Um, I think being an agriculture person and in my sector, for, of course, that's where I will speak to. I think we are excited okay. because um, the policies that have been read out so far and with the flagship of the NPP agricultural policy, it looks exciting and it looks promising. Mm -hmm. And so I think, yes, we can't assess, we can't put some figures there yet because the season is about to start. Mm -hmm. But at least the preparation so far and what we are hearing, if it's anything to go by, then we are happy and hopeful. And mm. so, yes. That the investment will turn around and we'll see exactly. <laughs> some positive mm. results. Exactly. So now let's talk, since in a matter of hours, on Wednesday, the government will launch the planting for food and jobs at Gosso in the Bonhoeffel region. Let's talk about that. Uh, th that idea seemed a very good idea. We have started this at a time, I think we need to protect what we eat and get more people to go into that sector. 
you have listened to the government talk about it, tout what this is going to do. What are your initial comments about the planting for food and jobs, Charles? Mm. Okay, thank you. I think I'm not still different from my uh, earlier uh, position. Planting for food and jobs is a fantastic program if you're able to implement it well. So launching it in Gwoso, which happened to the middle belt of Ghana and the food basket of Ghana, I think it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, the program itself is good. Uh, there are three key components in that program that we are looking at. We are aware of the problem with uh, extension services. Our research we did in 2018 shows that we have one extension uh, officer providing services to 3,000 farmers, mm -hmm. which is a very wide gap. So MPP government promised to bridge that gap. And in their manifesto, they promised to bring it down from one uh, extension officer to 3,000 farmers to one extension officer to 500 farmers. So that is good. And it's also captured in planting for food and jobs. They also but on that one, yesterday or on Monday, when we organized a program to commemorate the 100 days in office of the government, the vice president actually mentioned that 1,400 extension officers are going to be engaged, yeah. or they are already they are in the process. Yeah. They have been trained. They are going to be absorbed so they can help with this system. Have you heard about that? I have heard about it, and just like I said, I said the the intentions are good. There's difference between intentions and actual application. But they said they are going to do yeah, it. The 1,400 he yeah. mentioned yeah. Where are already are being engaged. Where, where are they coming from? That is the question. If they are doing it, look, we continue to provide recommendations on how government will address farmer extension ratio gap. And we are saying that, look, when you go to most of the district assemblies, you have a lot of extension officers who are there. They are not able to reach out to farmers. What are the problems? They are lacking basic facilities like motorbikes to be able to reach out to the farmers. Those who have motorbikes don't have fuel to fuel those motorbikes to visit farmers. They don't have access to internet facility, laptops, and other things. What are we doing with those people? There are people who completed agri training colleges and they place embargo on recruitment. Have we lifted the embargo? That's what he said. Happy. No. He said they have lifted. Have That's programs. why they are what engaging 1,400. And we are all aware is that they are going to engage national service personnel. And those service personnel will be trained by the district agri uh, 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 offices. So they will go there. I have serious problem with that. So your point is they are not engaging the already trained they should, In the first place, look, extension at, look, offices. At, look at what we have, what we have in the system. The old extension offices who are there, they have nothing to do because of lack of logistics. They have the knowledge. Because they are not equipped. They are not equipped. So let's try to equip them. And now we will now bring more on board to fill in the gap. But you can't go and bring those who have no knowledge in the area. You are going to use just one man to train them to go and provide service to farmers. Is that the case? Do you have That's evidence to show That's the case that is the case? I have spoken, I just came returned from Kintampo hmm. and I have a lot of extension officers who were looking for us to support them hmm. so that they will be able to do these facilities. And they themselves also said they heard that government is recruiting people and those people will come under them so that they will train them. And the point I'm making is that a farmer who is engaged in agriculture business for several years. Eh? These people go there, the farmers rather school them because these people lack the capacity, they lack the experience to do that. So if you want to do that, the first point of call is the existing one. We empower them, build their capacity, equip them. Now we will attach these people to them so that they will start working. For a year or two times, they will have gained experience. Then you will send them there. But if you just send them fresh, you say this, we go and train farmers. At the end of the day, they will provide information that farmers are compelled to take. But that information might not necessarily be needed. So you think we have started on a wrong note with the we engagement of the extension officers? That on that score, we completely disagree with the approach. We need extension officers, but the approach is wrong. The second one is that the project beneficiaries, mm -hmm. those that they are targeting to benefit the, uh, from the project, we have serious problem with it. The project is saying that for you to be a beneficiary of planting for food and jobs, you might have had five acres or more. Is this on record? It's on record. It was, it was said by the minister himself. I cannot sit here and lie for him. You understand? So, if you are saying that you are targeting farmers with five acres and above, majority of farmers, over 80%, who provide for the agriculture sector, have less than five acres, especially the women. So, are we leaving all these people out? Did you, were you asked, did you make any input on that? Why we should have the acreage 
less than five? That is the problem. The problem is that they sit in the office and design the program. I thought you were engaged in this. The point is that, that that's the point I'm making. They are launching planting for food and jobs. We are never invited. Key stakeholders like us, who have majority of farmers on the ground there, are not invited. And it's not only us. There are other farmer associations who have not been invited. So who are those we are making the problem for? So if they were to consult us, we would have at least suggested to them that, look, you have over 80% of farmer population, those who need these services, having less than five acres, especially the women. Are we leaving those people out? So I would have expected that we should rather see that the beneficiaries should be those who have less than five acres, those who are going to plant less than five they acres, not more, more than five acres. Because those who are planting more than five acres, already their capacity have been built, they have the resources to be able to purchase these facilities, so they don't really need the support that much. So there will be another way of supporting them. So that's another area. Issue of land preparation is completely missing. And we know the problem most farmers face. Before you that. go to the land um, preparation, do you know if the registration for the farmers who are going to benefit on this program is closed or is almost closing? Uh, what is done is that the registration is done at the district level. Yes. Um, the MOFA directed at the district level register the farmers. They submit the names to the crop directed at the national level. They go back. Uh, currently, they engage Isoko who will yes. go back, work with the MOFA directory, and mm -hmm. then they, they will visit the farmers, go to their farms, take the measurement of their acreages and their biometric data, then they capture them in. But the input supply hasn't started yet. Okay. Before we continue, I'd like us to talk about the fertilizer distribution also, which has been slashed by 50%. If you are, your initial thoughts, I think Charles is so um, disappointed in some areas. I don't know what you think about that. Thank you very much, Martha. Um, I think with every new program, there's bound to be some challenges. But I think it's a step in the right direction that all Ghanaians should be up and doing. I call it a clarion call, and that I think we should all come together and make sure this program becomes a success. Yes, there are challenges. But I believe a lot of us were consulted. There was a committee that was put together they call strategic a group. I think P. Fudge happened to be a member. And so those were the stages where some of these issues should have been brought out. Yes. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I also believe um, farmers were existing before the NPP government came. Mm -hmm. They are only trying to address some of the challenges. And so by rolling out this program to cater for, or to cater to, like say uh, five acres per holder or all of that. They were looking at an increase in whatever was existing already because of the subsidy that was being rolled out. So that's just about that. With the extension problem or program that we are talking about, for a longish while now, there's uh, not been any extension recruitment yes. at all. Mm -hmm. And the ratio that Charles rolled One out. to three thousand. One to three thousand. That has been the issue. Aside of the uh, inadequate human resource, there is also inadequate uh, Logistics. logistical uh, resource. And so, yes, I know they will be equipping them as well. But we need to increase the human resource base, and especially with our students from the tertiaries like the agricultural students, the university students. Most of them are agronomists, but they, 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 this job embargo has sort of curtailed all their movement, and they are going about looking for the non-existent white color jobs. So I think for the first quarter, if they've been able to rope in over 1,400 1, farmers, we should encourage them and continue to make the needed inputs as and when we go. That is what I, I believe. We can't always take the attitude of just sitting back and saying, let them do it and let's see. No, I don't think it's positive enough. We all have been in this sector. Some of us have been there for well over two decades now, or almost. And we've known these challenges day to day. The farmers had, had, had gone through all sorts of challenges and d difficulties. But at least with these new uh, extension slot on board, I believe there is so much that can be rolled out, especially starting with the southern sector, who are privileged to have two uh, seasons per year.
By the time we reach the northern sector, I believe a lot of experience would have been gained and then it will roll off. Granted, um, there's still a lot of challenges because me, my difficulty has been the consideration of the value chain approach, okay. which means the market, the processing bit, the pre-processing, even the packaging and all of those. So that's where I sit, mm -hmm. where I, that's where I come from, because I think there was something like that with the buffer stock program. Mm -hmm. But this, we have different categories of, uh, or different varieties of uh, crops that we are expected to do. My, my question is, are we well prepared, especially at the post-harvest level? Mm. The stocks, the storage, the warehousing, the marketing. And this is what I, where I believe we all need to continue to input and see where we can go from here. But so far, do you know the plan? Do you have any idea what the plan is? From harvesting down ah uh, that's what we are t i know there's there's been some verbal uh, promises that there's some markets out there somewhere i i can't put a figure on it but then i believe um with for instance with processing and storage and all of that it's still challenging mm -hmm. and so i would have loved that this year would have been a pilot and would mm -hmm. have been scaled up as we mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. that is what i think but i also uh, uh, very conservative in total condemnation. No, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't believe in that. I, 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 at any given opportunity, I think all the actors along the valley chain should see how best we can we let can this thing it. work and be successful. Okay. Because I think the government, we have the goodwill of the government. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot more issues that we can also talk about regarding uh, the taxation on inputs. Because Hitherto, it was not there. But it looks like it's been sneaked in here, mm -hmm. and then importers are having to bear that harsh uh, uh, taxation, th which they didn't used to be. Okay. And that will inadvertently go okay. to affect the farmer, okay. because a businessman will always, almost push it down the final consumer oh, so that's exactly, to make have to make his money exactly, exactly. but and let's talk about your role in this whole planting for food and jobs what is a seed traders role yes um we still play a very key role and so for that matter when uh, the policy was rolled out or when it was heard and the advertisement came into the newspapers local seed producers immediately rushed uh, to, to have a negotiation, a dialogue with the ministry, and were given the needed audience. And as we sit, I'm happy to say that the local seed producers have been given the opportunity to supply certain amount of seed uh, okay. volumes. And that is that's good. That's it's a, it's a good thing in, in the right way. Uh, but still, we couldn't even meet the quantities that was needed. Really? Yes. So it's still, it's still um, we are still believing that they are still going to import some more. But at least it, it, it's a good start. So you we, have a percentage yes. that you will. Yeah. In fact, what we were given to supply, we couldn't even meet it. We didn't have Why? that much. Are you in under country. resource, to, or you, you you don't have the capacity to produce more seeds? Uh, seeds. You know, and that is, again, another challenge. It's very difficult to get up and say, I need so much quantity of seed within yeah. a month. It doesn't work like that. It still goes through the growing process. It goes through the processes, okay. uh, dry, drying and all of that to get it to the right um, uh, moisture levels and all of that. And so, therefore, what we have currently is the leftover stock from last minor season. And our brothers up north only have even one season. So they still have some stocks which they couldn't sell, but it's still very viable. So that is what we're able to mobilize okay. to even because it, it's a bit of a rush. And going forward, that is the advice we are, we, we are trying to communicate to the ministry that, look, we should know the forecast and to be able to plan properly and, and to meet the specs. Other than that, we can be sitting here and then imports will be brought in and that has its own attendant problems regards, regards uh, um, diseases, 
infestation and all of that. So okay. that's this another the, the flip side of it. So looking into the future, you are preparing to be able to meet the demand. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Charles, let's talk about the fertilizer. Yeah. For farmers. Yeah. Fifty uh, yes, percent of you want to say something before no, you move no, on. Yeah. To that one? Yes, I, I agree with uh, Madam yeah. Efiyan Yantechi. I think uh, we are speaking the same language. Uh, the program, when I started, I said it's fantastic. I agree with the things they want to do. My problem has to do with the approach. That's where we have problem. And then we think that they need to do more assessment and do more consultation. So at the end of the day, all stakeholders will see themselves being part of it than to just sit on the fence and observe. Yeah, on fertilizer as part of uh, planting for food and jobs and the fertilizer subsidy program in general, I think uh, it has been announced, the minister launched and then uh, we all had the prizes. It has been sliced to 50%. Yes. And uh, if you take uh, MPK, that's the compound fertilizer, we are paying uh, 57 Ghana CDs uh, as against last year, 85 uh, or 89 okay. uh, uh, Ghana CDs last year. So that is good. Mm. You know, when the... Before you go on, the price of fertilizer, does it matter where you are in the country or because no, you measure 85 inches, it's, it's, it's flat. It's flat, yeah, wherever you find because, yourself. Yeah, because it's, that's why it's supposed okay. to be. Because the subsidy is to the importers mm. who give to their distributors. So if you sell any quantity, then later on you submit your uh, your, your 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 document for refund. Reimbursement. But still, still, I still have an issue. I have some discussion with some of the fertilizer importers, and they have challenges because last year subsidized fertilizer hasn't been paid yet. <laughs> so it means they have to search for their own funds to import for this year. And we all know interest rates and other things. If they are to go to bank to take loan, it will delay. I returned from Brown Half for last week. We are preparing our farms. Farms are ready, but fertilizer is not available because government have not concluded with a contract with the importers. So we are not on time with the we distribution? Are not on time. For the timing, we are very, very poor. So if you look at the fertilizer subsidy program, I want to give some small history. When we started in 2009, uh, the subsidy was 51%. And then uh, the following year, it came down to 30%. Mm. It continued reducing until last year when we came down to 21%. Now, this year, it went back again. And it so happened that it was during MPP government time that it started with the 51 And they came back and oh, brought okay. it back to 50%. So that was fantastic. Now, the 51% in 2009... 2008, 2009, came with its own challenges because the smuggling was so massive that most farmers who were to benefit from the program they didn't, get to didn't benefit actually from benefit it. fully. Mm. So we are seeing that the same thing is likely to happen. Because normally when things happen like that, there are people who are sitting down just taking strategies on how to cheat the system by smuggling it across the neighboring country, uh, Burkina. So Togo how do we block these loopholes? So our contribution as Pizan Farmers Association of Ghana is we are launching a program called Fertilizer Watch Dogs. Okay. So we've identified volunteers from all the border towns mm. who agree to help us monitor the fertilizer movement. Mm. So, so it will not be smart. We, we will work with these people, we will work with the custom, we will work with the security to make sure that anybody who is carrying fertilizer across those borders within that period the fertilizer is blocked. We do proper investigation to see whether it's part of the subsidized fertilizer before we allow it to go. Okay. But just like we said, fertilizer alone doesn't address the problem. Fertilizer goes with so many other things. As you was talking, it the goes inputs. with seeds. The seed subsidy is only part of the planting for food and jobs. It's not part of the main fertilizer subsidy program. So we are thinking that if you want farmers to actually benefit from the input, if you apply fertilizer on a bad seed, you are not still going to get the results you are looking for. Mm. So we think subsidy program itself should be complete. Okay. The complete should not just be limited to old fertilizer. Mm. We should look at seed and other agro inputs. Mm. We should even look at how can we reduce interest rate on loans so that farmers do not go to bank and take rate of 30, 37 okay. percent. Because you go to Ethiopia and other places, Interest rate is 9 and then 7 percent. That's Ethiopia. That's Ethiopia. <laughs> this is so Ghana. Now, so to me, to me, I think if you want to actually get the results that we are looking for, the mm -hmm. achievements we are looking for, 
we should look at other areas, including fertilizer. We shouldn't limit ourselves to only fertilizer. If you have you proposed to government before that distributing seeds also and subsidizing them maybe can help enhance our system? Yes. I think um, this was tried around 2012, 2013, okay. where seeds were subsidized. Uh, it had some challenges. But then, uh, so now, that's not part of, of this whole system. But I think we're looking at the percentages of the fertilizer that's been subsidized. And if you compare that to the price of seed, the price of seed is way low. It's probably nothing to write about. I think what we need to do is to probably collaborate with people like your good selves to educate the farmers on even the need to invest in good quality seeds. That is lacking. As we sit here, there's been so much mistrust with even the seed that is churned out to farmers and the, and the farmer save seed. The farmers are always comfortable with their own save seed mm -hmm. because at least they are sure of, of the germination, the viability and all of that. But then with the so-called uh, uh, improved seeds, of which I am a player, you know, there's always some challenges about that. It has to do with sometimes accessibility itself, the availability on time, the, and sometimes pricing is relative. Whichever one of these the farmer sees as a challenge, and so therefore they are still very comfortable with their own safe seed. Okay. And so I think uh, that's why I am happy about the extension uh, involvement Service. in this whole thing. Mm. To be able to make the right advice with the good agronomic practices to farmers and to let them see the need to invest in good quality seed. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't invest in quality seed, no, if they, even if they dash the fertilizer to you, you will not it's make useless. anything. But still, farmers uh, somehow don't appreciate the need for quality seed because I think, Ghana, we are so blessed. You can see maize growing in between um, <laughs> concrete <laughs> floors. Everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> and then we are also privileged to have assorted foods all around. Mm -hmm. If it's not maize, it's rice. If it's not rice, it's uh, cassava. plantain, cassava. We are blessed. That is why it, 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 we can still see our, our neighboring uh, countries. countries like Burkinas still now even way ahead of us in their seed production because we, we don't seem to have invested very well in our seed systems, which is also a whole new area by itself. Okay, so I think we need education on that. We need to, the government with this program, need to also establish demonstration farms for the farmers to be convinced that farmers are like uh, seeing is believing. Yes. Okay, and by word of mouth from their fellow farmers. Mm -hmm. I'm a, an input dealer, but they, they will rarely buy mm -hmm. my word. Okay. Because they know you just want to sell I to just them. I'm a business person for, 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 for Christ's sake. And so therefore, they would want to see, okay, so this seed that you're holding, is this what is done by germination and this, how much the yields are? Immediately, they will be prepared to invest in it. So okay. I think the uh, extension people, mm -hmm. especially those who are coming on board, should equally try and, uh, with the assistance of government, of course, to establish more demonstration farms like uh, salad of them scattered all around so that farmers in the catchments in the various districts the communities will see a first hand what kind of seeds we are talking about won't mm -hmm. private participation help because if you are leaving everything on the yeah. shoulders of government sometimes it becomes overwhelming i know government should be able to do it but as we wait for government we are whiling away time can't we do something mm -hmm. i think uh, private people are doing a lot on that because the whole seed system has been privatized for since 1979 oh, okay. it's been privatized so uh, privatized so the government role is regulation seed certification uh extension services and, and and the likes so it's still in the hands of the private sector but with this advent program that government is trying to help I, that's why I'm more interested in the extension bit, which is the government's uh, role. Oh, yes. yes, so that needs to be strengthened in collaboration with the private sector to be able to establish more of these satellite demo farms so that the farmers can really be convinced 
and to see the need to invest in good quality seeds. Okay. Before every other thing, I, I, I want mm -hmm. uh, our Ghanaian farmers to attach the same kind of importance to seed as we are talking uh, fertilizer exactly. and any other uh, yes. on the value chain. Okay. Charles, yeah. private sector role. Yeah, I think I agree with you. You are a private organization. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, the private man is a profit person. Uh, wherever there's profit, the private man wants to go in. So, what are the challenges in the seed value chain that uh, limits the participation of uh, private persons? You know, in Ghana, climate change is a serious problem. And if you're a seed grower and uh, you don't get regular rainfall, because our irrigation system is less than 2% mm. of the entire cultivation land area. So we have few people who have access to irrigation facilities. So if you're a seed grower, you need to have regular supply of water. So creation of water, available water, private man will not go and dig a dam to grow seeds. That should be the role of government. So I think governments will create the enabling environment for the private sector to come in. And uh, gradually, it's an area that I've actually seen more interesting persons coming on board. Okay. And farmers gradually are also getting the information. They are getting to use to, the, uh, to, to, to using good seeds. But we still have a challenge with the availability. We've done a research. We've done a survey on farmers' access to quality seed. And some of the issues that are coming up is that you go to some areas, and the seeds that are sold to farmers, purported to be improved seeds, tend not to even be viable. They really? plant them, and they don't germinate. If it's, yeah. It's, it's happening, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's happening in so some So who areas. is doing this? Who is okay. mixing the seeds yeah. and selling non-viable seeds because to farmers? Because we, we, we try to set a, a training center in Tamale okay. on soya. So what we did was to let the farmers themselves take hold of the project. They produce, and then we support them with the, all the modernized agriculture practices. Give them the improved body, improved soil seeds for them, support them with land preparation, with training and other things. The first year we bought the seed for them, there were some farmers who resisted taking the seeds that we bought for them. Okay. They used their own seeds. Those who received the seeds from us, majority who planted the seeds, never got a good germination. Oh. So the following year, all the farmers were saying that no, they, will reject they will prefer your to use their own seeds. There are people in the system who are still not necessarily seed growers. They go and buy the grains, come and sort them out, and sell them as improved seeds to farmers. So this people, it's good Nasdaq are now in place, National Association of Seed Traders. Mm. They will be able to actually help us to weed out these people. So these are other challenges which are making farmers not to trust um, mm. the improved seeds and they prefer to use their own seeds. Okay, so I'll let you react to that one and give me your concluding remarks on the planting for food and jobs. All right. Um, it's true. What Charles is saying is true. And so um, I think there's a lot of issues that, that uh, in, in, in form uh, a good seed and a, and a bad seed. Um, I think... MOFA, uh, there's a unit under MOFA, uh, Ghana Seed Inspectorate Division. They are the regulators of seed production. Okay. And so they work with the breeders, that those are the researchers, through to multiplication people and the certified seed producers. And make sure that everything that is required for certification, it's done appropriately before it's released to the seed producer, who also carries them to the outlets mm -hmm. of uh, import dealers. But then from there on, anything at all can happen. We don't have enough seed infrastructure, like the cold rooms. Seed, immediately they leave the processing centers, need to go to the cold room. Okay. With that ambience uh, uh, temperature. To preserve it. Exactly. Okay. Because seeds should always be dried to 13% moisture content. And this, right from the processing center, needs to go to the cold room. There isn't enough of those. Again, most uh, seed producers don't have access to these facilities, don't also somehow uh, 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 not willing to even invest in that aspect of the processes. So maybe they pick from the processing centers where they do drying, we do shelling, drying, cleaning, and then it should go to store. 
you know, before it gets to the distributors. The distributors or these outlets don't also have the ambient atmosphere mm -hmm. to, to keep, to keep the, the, seed, seed the way it ought exactly. to be. Exactly. You know, these are small shops mm -hmm. with poor ventilations and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so it can be there. And that could just be one small aspect of their investment. There is also the agrochemicals, even how to package them and all that. So there's a, a, a topic that we, we always try to address, that seed handling is always an issue. But then we also would encourage farmers to buy from registered dealers for traceability okay okay and that is the association of ghana agro input dealers association they are there and they are all lotted all over the membership are, are there they in there. the hinterlands that the average farmer can assess them that's another and thing that is another thing because of the seasonal nature of these agricultural inputs business people are always um, very skeptical in where they put their monies. It's true. So they will not go and hire a shop and put up an outlet only for it to be shut down by three months and then to go back. So they are mostly in the capitals, mm -hmm. they are mostly in some districts, but when it gets to the hinterlands, it becomes challenging. So we in the seed sector or in, uh, in NASDAQ, we are trying to see how best we can uh, improve on our distribution systems okay. to get these seeds. And this is being done, for instance, by ATTP. That's uh, Agricultural Technology Transfer Project under the USID in the northern sector. Okay. So some seed producers have been given frozen, uh, freezing vans okay. Okay, to carry these seeds mm. along the remote areas. And I, I believe this thing should be replicated down south okay. it's not here yet but that's how we need to do this and it's also for traceability mm. other than that people will take advantage of the system and because of the agricultural nature of this whole thing people also take advantage of inputs now you go to abu silk and people selling papers and they are selling seed and they are selling agrochemicals <laughs> really they don't what even has papers mm -hmm. got to do with exactly <laughs> agrochemicals they find it lucrative mm -hmm. And okay. they think because it has to do with farmers, anybody at all can go in. Mm. But our regulators are PPRSD and AMOFA and EPA, Environmental Protection Agency. They are, and for instance, some of us in these uh, national associations have uh, tried to play uh, some policing role. You may call EPA and say, look, there is an uh, unregistered input dealer here, blah, 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 this is doing this, this, that. They say, we are logistically handicapped. We can't <laughs> even move. Mm -hmm. And so that's it. You go to Abobloshi, you find people spread mats yes. on the floor and they are selling yes. weedy size and all of that. And these are chemicals. It's the same thing we see. It. They are spread in the sun. You go to KGTR and they are not supposed to receive direct to sunlight. Sun. Okay, so these are some of the challenges we all are embattling with. And so I, that's why I call it a collective, but it, it takes a lot of education. And you, the media, I think you, do, you should do more to partner <laughs> us, to be able to speak more to these issues and see how best we can all improve on it. Other than that, productivity is an issue, contamination, adulteration, and faking. We, mm. we won't come to that yet. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Charles, let's conclude on the planting for food and jobs and all the challenges. Yeah. So, in wrapping up, what, what do you think is a way forward? The because if the government is bent on carrying out this yeah. campaign, yeah. then it will happen. But what should we do? What we should do is um, to move away from implementing the project in the offices and engage all key stakeholders. We are ready. As I speak, it doesn't mean we are away. We are also implementing part. We are doing the sorghum. Uh, we'll take the input, support the farmers they produce. We are going to engage Guinness Ghana. We are already in talk for them to mm -hmm. buy the products from uh, the farmers when we produce. So what we are calling on government is that we are all happy with the program and we are ready to partner them to ensure that they get project success. But if they don't change from the current approach, it will not help anybody. Because fertilizer, if you are a farmer, maybe a few years will tell you that if you grow a, a maize, for instance, two weeks' time, you need to do your first fertilizer application. And as we speak, southern part of the country and the middle belt, the distribution they is are delayed. growing, and the distribution is not there. So when are you now bringing these inputs for the farmers? 
We finished plowing. I went to plow my farm. Our members plow their farms. They are waiting for the seeds. The seeds are not coming. So when are we bringing the seeds and the fertilizers? But the seeds, so, they have to go and buy them. No, planting for, are we for planting. Oh, for you are talking food. about those on the planting for food, food and, and jobs. jobs. Okay. Okay. Planting for food and jobs, government is distributing apart from, the seeds. Apart from engaging a few and a group to supply the seed, they are also importing seeds. Those because seeds, they couldn't meet the yeah, demand. Because yeah. they couldn't meet the demand. Those seeds they place order for imports are not yet in. Okay. Yet the season is up. So at the end of the day, we put money there if care is not taken. These inputs will be in and the farmers will not take them. Hmm. So to me, I think they need to actually I mean, do more. Mm. than the talking. The talking is more than the practice. I think that was a, a planning problem. Yeah. Because if they had planned earlier, yeah, it then they should have, have been here. So what they needed to have done is to be moderate. Okay. Because the campaigning season is over. A lot of implementation. <laughs> so you don't keep putting emphasis that you want to provide jobs for over 750,000 people within the first year. So you are understand? you saying that is giving them pressure no, to no, no. do we, something we to that pilot. they... Just like a few said, <laughs> they need to pilot, be moderate, okay. and do just target some few farmers. Mm -hmm. If you get successes, the failures that will come will serve as lessons. Okay. In going forward, you will now expand, carry on board the lessons that you've learned, you improve on the failures, and I think when we do that, in going forward, agriculture will be able to lead this country to industrial nation. Let's talk about seed production. In Ghana, what are the key challenges we face with seed production in Ghana? Yes, for you. Okay, um, I think they are primarily linkages. Okay. Because uh, seed production is in three classes. That's from the breeder or the researchers, and then the multiplication wing, and then the private. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and these two are public outfits. But then there is a certified one, which is done by the, um, the private people. And so these, I think the linkages along this value chain needs to be improved, even okay. though uh, there's been some improvement over the years uh, regarding, uh, for instance, the work that NVRRC do, the National Variety Release and Registration Committee, which is a direct technical wing hmm. under the Seed Council of Ghana. I think in there, we have all the heads of the relevant um, institutions. institutions and, and then four slots for the private oh. sector. Okay. And so that is good. Um, and then when you, you get to the, uh, the, the linkages issue comes especially from the farmer and the research. Mm -hmm. The farmer sits in here somewhere, even though some farmers are involved in the research bit right from the beginning, not all farmers are in the know. And so there's a lot of work that our researchers have done over the years. And so this, this committee has sought to provide a catalog of all the seed varieties that have been released over the years. I remember last year when the book was launched, the seed varieties that had been released is about 169. Okay. And most of them are climate smart varieties. Usually are they are staple foods? They are everything. Okay. Uh, they are, are, are staples, maize, sorghum, cassava, all of those ones, okay? okay. And the vegetables, I must say, are very minimal there. Mm. That's an area we also need to critically look at. Mm. The exotics, the vegetables, we are not there at all. Wow. The cabbages, the lettuces, and all, the, all of them are important so in the country. So every seed we plant of that is important. It's important. We are not there yet at all. And then the, even the local seeds, we are yet to even get our own tomato seed that's been... Uh, that should come from our research people. We tried some last year, but no, we couldn't meet it, so we sort of... So that's where we are. And then, uh, aside of that, this, the commercialization or the accessibility or the availability of the research finding. Like I said, the researcher does his own job. The variety committee goes to release and ensures its registration. It can go into the Ghana seed 
uh, Gazette and all of that, even at the ECOWAS level, which we are still, uh, you know, we are working, on. working with. But still, the farmer may not know. Mm. The farmer may not know. So it's one thing developing it and then yeah. another thing getting to the getting farmer. Getting it to the farmer and, and so the adoption and adaptation. Mm -hmm. You know, the adaptation is even factored in at the research level because all these researches of a particular variety is done along uh, particular ecologists mm -hmm. around the country. Mm -hmm. And so during the release period, all of this uh, information are shared with the committee. Uh, it was tried, for instance, maybe at Damango, it, does, it did this, it, it does better in Damango than uh, a giraffe. You know, all of those information okay. are spelled out and is catalogued. Okay, but then the farmer, the farmer may not know. All right, during the research level, the farmers in that catchment can be brought on board and be part mm. of the processes, but it may when end it's there. Over, yeah. that's, that's it. it. So me, to me, that's a key challenge. And then also educating the farmers to read their minds of uh, a name that's become... Their own seat. <laughs> No, no, Any no, other thing even, that comes, yeah, they are skeptical about they it. They are, they are, especially with this confusion of GMOs that mm -hmm. I don't even want to mention here. <laughs> but see, these are improved seeds that are locally done. So we are praying that uh, education of these and linkages should be enhanced and fortified for the farmers to see that indeed these are seeds produced locally and that one the researchers are not there to kill their indigenous varieties no mm. they are the same indigenous varieties that are picked and improved on for years the minimum you can get for a research of a seed to be released is over seven years some go That's as far as time 12 years and the researcher will be working on a particular seed. at the end of the day it can just end in, in, on the shelves nobody picks it it's not even acknowledged you know, and so that this is well, where we is are. It, is it a matter of us not appreci appreciating research or what? A bit of that and, and also uh, lack of information. They may okay. not know. So now uh, I think the media involvement is very, very critical. I remember the last meeting we had in Kumasi with these researchers. It's something that we are uh, very, very passionate about. How do we get research findings to the farmer? and to the Ghanaian public for that matter. You know, so it is something that we are all critically jaw jawing and looking at ways and means to, to make these things accessible and acceptable by farmers and to read their minds of GMOs because that's yes. not what we are talking about. We are talking about our locally oh, produced see. seed varieties. Because the pleasure I will get in knowing mm. that I have researched into this, I came out with it, exactly. it is accepted, and yeah. the farmer is using it. That is what I yeah. look exactly. forward to getting anyway. So why are you not getting that? Are you not liaising mm. with the um, institutions? Yeah, we believe in participatory research. We don't believe in doing something and come and give it to us. And that has been the problem. Because our proposal for seed sector, for the seed sector to do well, and for the researchers to also get benefit or appreciation from farmers from what they've done, is for them from the onset try to get farmers' view on what is the problem. What kind of seed are you looking for? Is it a seed that is a drought resistant? A seed that comes with a, a particular taste? Is it a seed that is high yielding? If you involve the farmers from the beginning, and then when you start the process, you take them through in the field, the demonstration field, you let them have a feel of it. Not only the farmers, just as he's saying, the media. Take the media alongside, don't wait until you come up with the final result, then you take it. If you do that, it will backfire. And I'm also thinking that the way the proponents, our proponents of GMOs, their approach has gone a long way to affect farmers' interest in taking mm. improved seeds. Okay. Because when we started from the beginning, we said, look, we need to judge you. But if you say whether you like it or not, we are bringing GMO <coughs> in. We'll keep quiet. We'll bring the GMO, we'll make sure that no farmer buys it. As I speak to you, it's not a lie. Any seed that is given to any of our members, be it Upper West, Upper East, Volta, Western, they will call the sectaria. Such mm. as, these people have brought this seed. Sure. Are you sure it's not GMO? <laughs> they got, they, there was a point. They call us that, uh, I got a call from Kintempo. They said, oh, 
uh, there are some seed uh, they said uh, uh, this in the pana so they brought it and then we told them they should take it back because it's gm <laughs> you get the point so when we were doing the campaign um campaigning for empowerment of our local seed growers campaigning for um uh, um, uh, uptake of uh, open pollinated seed varieties and then the hybrid seeds. The our opponents from the other side were oh, kicking. Oh, you are, you are making noise. GMO is the way to go, mm -hmm. and that's the results we are getting today. Mm -hmm. So to me, I think in uh, going forward, it's not late. We are all in the, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the in the in the in the in the game. We have just joined the National Association of Seed Growers, NASDAQ, as a member. Uh, we are going to work closely with them to see how we will send the fundings of uh, the seeds that they have mm -hmm. to our members and yes. encourage them to also take that. So we are now calling in the government to take out all the obstacles which make it difficult for private sector to participate in the seed production so that they will be able to participate. When we do that, I think it won't be long. We will to increase our production. After all, average yield per acre in Ghana is 3.5 uh, metric tons of maize. You go to other places like Kenya where they are even getting nine metric tons per acre. Uh, Ethiopia, they are getting about eight metric tons per acre. You go to South Africa, they are even getting more. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I think our production level is far, far, far below the average level that we are looking for. So if you are able to address these constraints, most farmers will actually participate in but uh, using the But before you go, if you are, do we have any GMO in the system in not, Ghana not here? Not at all. Not at all. I think that is a perception that needs to be corrected. Okay. We don't have GMOs at all. All these we are talking about were, were like uh, something that was tattooed from the world and it got down here. Mm. Any seed that is imported into the country goes through properly laid structure, which be it MOFA. MOFA has all the units and directories that deal with seed imports. And so nobody like Pana, for instance, that they are talking about, they brought the germplasm through our researches and through the appropriate courtesies. And it had been in the system for development okay. for seven to eight years. Mm. Even that we granted them the uh, certificate and the release last year. All right. So uh, it's a wrong assumption that people are just bringing in seeds and so. And now I'm happy Charles mentioned that uh, uh, other African countries have higher high yields, yields yeah. because they have feared the unknown, which is not GMO, but they are participating and patronizing their own locally improved varieties by their own researchers. Okay. But here, because the GMO went ahead of whatever everything else everything is a gym we think yeah. everything is and GM. that is not so mm -hmm. so we our farmers should begin to rearrange their minds with the help of all stakeholders mm -hmm. especially the private sector. the government can't do it all so that we are able to educate them and to let them know and read their minds completely object gmo is not in the system <laughs> It's not. At least not here yeah, for now. At least not here for now. <laughs> but we have hybrid seeds. That are, some are done local, improved locally and some are imported. Okay. Those are there. And if we want to see increase in productivity, this is the way to go. We can continue to enjoy farmer safe seed and expect the same high yields. It won't happen. Okay. Because we need to invest in quality seed that are improved upon and that is slightly higher than what the farmer have saved over the years. Seed is like uh, probably a woman giving birth. After a while, you grow weak. And so if you continue to replant your seed and see, uh, plant, replant and replant, so weak it loses its yes. uh, viability and, and strength. Okay. That is uh, because seed is a living thing. And that's the system most of our farmers exactly. are adopting and using. Yeah. I see. So for now, there's no GMO in the At system. All. Someone told me they, was, they have sneaked it into the country. You already. can't even be know. sneaked in. <laughs> <It's not true. laughs> as soon as you arrive at the airport, the fighter people, they are, you can't, mm -hmm. if you, even if you need to bring in any, uh, even a flower, mm -hmm. a live plant from anywhere, it's not acceptable in Ghana. It, okay. It's in it's everywhere. Okay. Because there's soil infestation and all of that. So please. <laughs> so People for all those be. who are thinking there's GM already in the system and you are being careful of what you buy and what you eat, you are being assured. I'm a stakeholder who knows the ins and outs that there's no GM in the system. So I've been speaking with Charles Nyaba and then Ifia Usinyantichi on planting for food and jobs and then our seed growing and seed trading trends in Ghana, how we can improve yields. 
so we can all benefit from the food we plant. Thank you.